Hello, in this module we're going to be talking about word problems with percentages. So some key language to know is that if a word problem wants us to add or has an addition component to it, they're going to use words like sum, increase, total, combined, added to, or more than. And if they want us to use subtraction, they're going to use words like difference, decrease, reduce by, fewer, less than, subtracted from. And if they want us to use multiplication, they're going to use words like double, triple, times, of, per, product of, rate, or multiplied. And if they want us to use division, they're going to use words like half, out of, percentage, quarter, distribute, quotient, of, and divided. So let's look at a word problem and calculate it into an equation. So a one-step problem, this is going to give a word problem that we have like one step, one equation we have to set up to solve. So the nursing student spends 1,100 on books for the two semesters. How much does the nursing student spend per semester? So we have the total amount spent, 1,100. We're dividing it by the two semesters, which will give us 550 per semester. So that's a one-step problem. So now we're going to look at a two-step problem. And what this means is there's really two sort of problems that we have to set up. So this semester, Jamie has done twice as many practice problems as she did last semester. If she does 200 more problems this semester, she will have 400. How many questions did da Jamie do last semester? So what we're going to look at is our first, our step one. This is going to be the first equation we're going to set up. So we need to pick what our variables are going to be. So there's two things that we are trying to find out, right? So this semester and last semester. So X will be this semester and Y will be last semester. So if we look at the first line, this semester Jamie has done twice as many practice problems as she did last semester. So this semester she did twice as many as last semester. So our equation is X equals 2Y because this semester she did twice as many as last semester. So 2Y will equal X. Now the next line, if she does 200 more problems this semester, she will have 400. How many questions did Jamie do last semester? So now we know step two is going to be if this semester she does 200 more, she'll have 400. So we know this semester plus 200, because she's doing 200 more, equals 400. Well, now we have an equation where we can solve for x, right? So we can subtract 200 from each side and we get x equals 200. Great. Now we're going to plug that into our step one equation to figure out what y is because the actual question of the problem is how many questions did Jamie do last semester? So we're going to plug it in. So x equals 2y. So 200 equals 2y. Then we're going to divide each side by 2, right, because we want to get y on one side of the equation to figure out what it is. 2 will cancel out here. This 200 will become 100, and y equals 100. So we know that Jamie did 100 problems last semester. Okay. So then we may also see on the T's exam Word problems with percentages. Honestly, you will probably definitely see these on the exam. So they're usually seen as a pay increase or a price reduction on the T's. So a percent is a part over the total, and the total equals part over percent. So tips to find percent. So 10% of a number. If you move the decimal point one place to the left, that will be... 10% of that number. So for example, if you have 50 and you move the decimal one place to the left, you'll have five. So five is 10% of 50. 50% 50 of a number you will is half, so you'll divide that number in half. So 50% of 50 will be 25. 1% of a number, you're gonna move the decimal point two places to the left. 
So again, if we have 50 and we move that decimal point two places to the left, we're gonna have 0.5. So 0.5 is 1% of 50. 25% of a number, if you take that number, divide it in half, divide it in half again. So let's say, this one's a little tricky, but if you had 50, you divide it in half is 25. You divide it in half again is 12.5. So 12.5 is 25% of 50. For 20% of a number, you'll move the decimal place one place to the left and then double that number. So for example, again, say we have 50, we're gonna move that decimal point one place to the left, which is five, and then we're gonna double it, so 10. So 10 is 20% of 50. And then to find 5% of a number, you can move the decimal point one place to the left to find 10% and then divide it in half. So again, if we had 50, we move that decimal place one to the left, that gives us five, which would be 10% of 50, and then find half, so 2.5 would be 5% of 50. And 100% of any number is itself, so 100% of 50 would be 50. So let's look at word problems with percentages. So an example, Mary's clinical group has taken care of 20 patients this semester. If Mary has cared for 15% of these patients, how many patients has she cared for? So we're gonna use the equation total equals part over percentage. So our total number of patients is gonna be 20 patients. So that's how many the group has taken care of. And the percent we're looking for is 15%. So we're going to change the percent to a decimal we remember how to do that, right? We take 15 divided by 100, or we just move that decimal point over to. So our percent is going to change to the decimal 0 0.15, and the part that we're looking for is how many Mary cared for. We don't know, so that's x. So our equation is gonna be 20 equals x over 0 0.15, we're gonna multiply each side by 0 0.15 because we wanna get x on this side of the equal sign with a number on the other side so we can figure out what x is. If we multiply both sides by 0 0.15, it will cancel out over here. And 20 times 0 0.15 is gonna be three. So we know that Mary has cared for three patients. All right, so now we're gonna look at rounding. So rounding is reducing the digits in a number while still trying to keep the value similar. The results will be less accurate, but it will be a simpler form and it will be easier to use. Whole numbers can be rounded to the nearest 10, 100, or 1,000. So we remember this is our 10, this is our 100, or sorry, this is our ones, tens, hundreds, thousands. Then if you go this way, we have our tenths, our hundredths, our thousands. So usually, if the number is greater than five, we round it up. And if it's less than four, we round it down. You wanna look at the problem wording. They may tell you round this down or round this up. Or it may say things like round to the nearest tenth, hundredth, thousandth. And remember, if you have the TH at the end, that means it's on this side of the, ex the decimal point. So we have tenth, hundredth, thousandth, and then we have our ones, our tens, hundreds, thousands, etc. So for example, if this problem told you to round to the nearest tenth, so this number, tenth, it would, you have a five here, so that means you're gonna round up. So this is gonna round up to seven, and this would be the nearest tenth. So you wanna look at the digits to the right of the value being rounded. If it's less than five, make it zero and drop it. If it's five or more, add the one digit to be rounded. So know the places. So again, we have our decimal point, we have our tenths, our hundredths, our thousandths, and our ten thousandths. And then we have our decimal point and we have our ones, our tens, our hundreds, our thousands. So estimation, you may be asked to estimate a solution. An example would be a patient is having trouble breathing and takes 213 breaths in seven minutes. How many breaths do they take per minute? So in order to do that, you'll take 
213 breaths, and you can round that down to 210, which is easily divided by seven, so you get 30 breaths. So that could be a way to quickly solve the problem using estimation. So they might tell you in the problem, solve this by estimation, and then you know, because, I mean, you're going to have a calculator, which makes it a lot easier, but just so you know these concepts. So then there's also proportions and ratios. So a ratio is a fractional relationship between two qualities or quantities. For example, if there are 15 eggs in a coop and five chickens, there is a 15 to 5 egg to chicken ratio. It's commonly written as 15 with these double dots and 5. So this is your ratio. Ratios are commonly reduced. If we had a ratio of 20 to 10, this could be reduced to 2 to 1 by dividing both sides by 10. And a rate is a ratio expressed with numbers and units. So for example, price per hour. So we can look at the differences. So a ratio compares similar units, can be written three different ways, and you read it using the word two, so like two to one. Um, a rate compares different units, like dollars per hour. It's read using the word per, and it allows you to calculate a better deal. Both of them can be written as fractions, and both of them should be reduced to the lowest form. So a proportion is a relationship between two quantities when one changes the other changes so a direct proportion describes a relationship in which a quantity increases or decreases by a set amount for every increase or decrease in the other quality so you might hear in like science research things like there's a proportional change so like it just means like when one thing goes down another thing goes down at the same kind of has the same kind of relationship so like as one increases the other increases if one decreases the other decreases and a proportion is a mathematical sentence that states two ratios are equal to each other so example a over b equals c over d if you cross multiply you can get you'll get a times d equals b times c so for example a nurse can pull six pills from the omnicell in 20 seconds how many pills could they pull in 60 seconds? So we can put, they pulled six pills in 20 seconds. So that would be our A over B, six pills in 20 seconds. We want to know, because it's proportional, right? So it's equal. We want to know in 60 minutes, 60 seconds, how many can they pull? So in order to do that, we cross multiply. So six times 60 and 20 Y. So you'll get 360 equals 20y, and if we divide this side by 20, it will cancel out. If we decide, divide this side by 20, we will get 18. So y equals 18. So they could pull 18 pills in a minute at that rate because they are proportional to each other. As one increases, the other one increases. All right, so that is the end of this module. So make sure to do your worksheets and check the answer keys and do your quizzes, and I will see you in the next module. Bye.